Statistics prove that your home is going to be invaded, and that you and everyone you love most will be brutally murdered. Well, that's if you live for about a thousand years, given that of the 2.5 million burglaries in the US every year, only 1.6 or so million are home invasions. With the current population of 331.5 million, you've got some really long odds to actually end up the victim of a home invasion. However, it can still happen to you, and it doesn't hurt to be prepared. The first rule for surviving a home invasion is to make yourself a hard target. In the world of security, hard targets are targets that have taken measures to either protect themselves or make an attempt at attacking them so difficult or time-consuming that the odds of a successful attack are dramatically lowered. Common measures for hardening a target include security patrols, alarms and a quick reaction force, and physical barriers. Even just the appearance of being a hard target can often be enough to deter an attack in the first place. For home invasions, this means taking steps to make your home a hard target for would-be burglars. The first step can be as simple as leaving a light on in one of the public areas of the home, even while everyone else is asleep or the home is empty. Even better if you accompany that light with a television or radio, anything to give the illusion that someone is not only home but awake and aware. The vast majority of home invasions aren't looking to actually hurt anyone, and if burglars were aware someone was home, they would more than likely simply choose a different target. Should go without saying, but having strong locks is the key to deterring a home invasion. Most burglars use the front door when breaking into a home, and this means your first line of defense against an invader is a sturdy front door with an equally sturdy lock. You can even purchase tools such as doorstops that slide in from your side of the door and make it virtually impossible to open without tearing the entire thing off its hinges. Security lighting is also a vital home security tool, as burglars are far less likely to strike at a well-illuminated home where they might easily be spotted by passers-by. There are plenty of options for security lighting available, which include solar cells to make them energy efficient, and motion sensors, which activate bright lighting the moment they detect movement. Many modern home security systems even include active recording for later prosecution, and having your bright outside lights suddenly flare on can be a good warning to you inside the house that a prowler or Bigfoot is lurking outside. Only half of US homes have security systems, and with 83% of burglars checking for a security system before striking, this leaves unalarmed homes with a 300% greater chance of being broken into. Security systems often not only include loud alarms to deter an intruder and alert you of a penetration, but also have a feature that automatically dispatches either a security patrol or contacts police for a fast response. But having an alarm isn't good enough. The entire point is to make it clear that the home is alarmed. That's why most alarm services come with a large sticker or sign that can be posted in the yard, which prominently display the alarm company's logo and warns would-be intruders and Bigfoot that your home is alarmed. Once more, even the appearance of security can be a huge deterrent, so if you can't afford an alarm system, maybe just get yourself an alarm company sign and stick it in your front yard. Dogs are great deterrents as well, even though they don't have to be beefed up Cujos to keep you safe. Even a small yapping chihuahua can serve as a deterrent, making loud noises that can bring unwanted attention to an intruder. Of course, having a large protective dog can be a visual deterrent as well. But what if intruders get inside the house? Well, now it's time to think fast and be prepared. First, you have a plan. You and your family should know exactly what you're going to do if someone breaks into your home, so the plan can be initiated immediately and without the need for everyone to congregate and figure out what to do next. If possible, a safe room should be established in the house. This would be a room that's very difficult and time-consuming to break into, and that has some way of contacting the authorities. This is your fort, where you'll wait out the home invasion until police arrive. Take the advice of professionals, and no matter how many Chuck Norris movies you've recently seen or how big your gun collection is, get your ass in your safe room and stay there. Trying to repel home invaders can not only get you killed, but could actually land you in jail if you open fire and kill or severely injure one of the burglars. In some states, if a burglar isn't posing a direct threat to your life, shooting one just for breaking into your home can end up with you in prison. If you can avoid a fight, do it and just hop into your safe room. Valuables can be replaced, your life can't. However, if your home doesn't have a good safe room available, you need to amend your plan. The goal, once more, is to get to safety, so exits via windows or back doors should be well rehearsed. Children can be taught to leave their rooms via their bedroom windows as long as there's a safe way to do so. Exiting via a front or back door can be risky, and this is likely how the invader got into your home in the first place. The last thing you want is to run full tilt into your home invader. Keep in mind, most burglars don't want to add murder to their potential charges. Thus, fleeing is always the safest option. If you're surprised, however, and have no way to flee, cooperation is the next best option. 
option. Vast majority of burglars simply want to make a quick score and get out before a neighbor calls the cops, so giving up a few material goods and cash is infinitely better choice than getting killed. If, however, you have the means to defend yourself or your state allows you the full use of force in defense of your home, fighting back can also be an option. But it should be an option of last resort. Again, a few material goods isn't worth getting killed or killing over. When it comes to a home defense arsenal, there's a variety of choices and most of them are bad. For tips, we turn to our resident challenge expert, who happens to have almost a full decade of close quarters battle experience under his belt. First, you shouldn't assume that you'll be the single line of defense against a home invasion. A variety of things could take you out of the fight before it even begins, or you might not even be home when an invasion occurs. For these reasons, everyone in your household should be taught how to use a firearm properly, and yes, that even includes children. In fact, proper firearm training for children is one of the best ways to prevent an accidental death or injury. A gun is a tool, and if children growing up since the 1700s hunting with firearms as young as six, today's children are no worse suited for learning how to respect and even use a weapon. What firearm you choose, however, is also critical. A 9mm pistol is an excellent home defense tool, as it is incredibly easy to operate and learn how to use. It's also very easy for smaller or weaker members of the family to use effectively, and it doesn't have the kick of, say, a 45. That also means it doesn't have the stopping power of a 45, but let's be honest, you're not looking to take out a squad of enemy infantry wearing body armor. The vast majority of home invaders aren't looking to get into a shootout. A 9mm is simple, reliable, and a great home defense choice for your entire family. If you're looking to scale things up, don't fall into the easy pitfall of macho gun porn nonsense. Sure, a huge rifle can make you feel like Billy Badass, but oftentimes it can be terrible choices for home defense. In fact, our CQB expert doesn't even have a recommended rifle at all. A hunting rifle is simply not suited for close quarters and has an atrocious rate of fire, plus can be difficult to use effectively if wounded or by smaller members of the family. A civilian model assault rifle such as an M4 is an excellent close quarters battle tool, but it comes with its own problems. First, a 5.56 is going to punch through one or more of the walls in your home which means you're now putting your family's life at risk every time you take a shot. You can't predict the geometry of a firefight, and if you end up forced to shoot in the wrong direction, it could be you and not an invader putting a bullet in one of your family members. Second, most home invasions take place at night, so you should always assume the worst case scenario, a confrontation at night when you're likely groggy or tired and in very low light conditions. An assault rifle needs some expert marksmanship to be effective in these conditions, and while you may be hitting bullseyes at the range, it's a whole different story when you're scared for your life and just got woken up from a deep sleep at 3 am. That's why our resident expert recommends a good old fashioned shotgun. Shotguns are incredibly easy to operate, but best of all, excellent accuracy is not mandatory in order to drop a perp dead or at least make them seriously reconsider breaking into your house. Any member of the family can use a shotgun with great effectiveness, even though, yes, they do pack quite a kick that can make it difficult for weaker or smaller members of the family to operate. But one shot is often enough with a shotgun anyway, while an assault rifle, as many US troops found out overseas, can take multiple hits to ensure a kill. A shotgun's wide dispersal also makes it easier to get hits on target under less than ideal conditions, such as you being sleep deprived and scared for your life at 2 am in the near pitch black. A shotgun is also less likely to penetrate through a wall and place your family at risk from wayward shots. Even if penetration does occur, most of the pellets will be stopped or deflected, with the remaining having large amounts of their kinetic energy sapped. Resulting wounds would be much more survivable than taking a 5.56 or a 7.62 in the gut, both rounds that can easily penetrate even concrete cover. Fighting should be a last resort, but if you have to fight, it's important to have the right tool for the job. Owning your very own AR-15 or M4 can make you feel like a pretty cool guy, but trying to use one in tight quarters will quickly show you why our military and police spend countless hours training on CQB courses. Plus, with every trigger pull, you run the risk of putting your family or even a neighbor at serious risk. While you're out shopping for a new home defense shotgun, make sure you get yourself a good old-fashioned pump action. Semi-autos may sport a better rate of fire, but they're well known to be finicky and prone to interruptions. Pump action shotguns have been defending American homes for two centuries and will likely continue to do so for centuries to come. Now go check out how to actually survive getting shot, or click this other video instead.